ask for uh, the roll call. Member present. Member Callahan present. Member Barry present. Member me present. The member Camiso is will be slightly late and is on its way. Um, pursuant to the open meeting law, any person may make an audio or video recording of this public meeting and may transmit the meeting through any meeting. Uh, attendees are therefore advised that such recordings or transmissions are being made, whether perceived or unperceived, by those present and deemed acknowledgeable and permissible. One more piece of housekeeping. The Planning Board General Rules. The Planning Board reserves the right to administer oaths, summon witnesses, call for the production of papers, cross-examine any person giving testimony during the proceedings, declare recess, limit debate, inspect the subject, site, or buildings during reasonable hours, and adjourn the hearing for cause. The order of business will be announced by the chair. Any questions will be directed to the chair. Any person wishing to speak, please raise your hand for recognition from the chair. When recognized, please state your name and address specific interest in the proceedings and special credentials, if any, pertaining to the presentation. Please speak slowly and within the context of the hearing matter. Hearing is being stenographed and taped for public record. Planning Board reserves the right to exclude any unnecessary, irrelevant, repetitive, or harassing presentations. Cross-examination between parties and interest or other person will, will be permitted only after due recognition from the chair. All documents, papers, plans are, that are introduced in the hearing shall be clearly identified by name or by some other designation, and the person so introducing them shall also be identif identified by name and address. A planning board exhibit letter will be uh, assigned to each submittal unless the submittal has been specifically identified by the exhibit letter. When excerpts from case law are cited, the complete text of the findings shall be furnished to the planning board within 14 days. And the only other thing that I'd add is that I just ask anyone who has cell phone or pages just to turn them off. Uh, the first item, <coughs> excuse me, first item are the planning board minutes um, from, I think everybody just got them tonight, um, from July 13th and then August 24th. I give the board an opportunity to peruse the minutes from the, fourth, from the 13th of July, and then I'd entertain a motion to accept. I have a motion to accept the minutes from the July 13th. So moved. So second. Second. Sorry. Oh, yeah. Discussion. All those in favor? Aye. And I'd ask the board to review the August 24th minutes. First item on our agenda is the 500. The uh, continued public hearing for 500 Commander Shake Boulevard, the FedEx site plan special permit planning board case 2015 50. Oh, I'm sorry. Yes, sir. 
Eric Salomon, 90 Quincy Shore Drive, apartment uh, 711. Pursuant to the uh, rules and regulations of the special permit under section 1A, they are required to have the public meeting within 65 days. They far exceeded that within hundreds of days now by continuing to continue this motion. I don't see any acceptable reason why we should grant this continuance again in light of them not showing up. I urge the board to do the right thing and vote no on the continuance and thus no on the special permit and require them to resubmit if they're required to do it properly and legally if they plan on trying to steal our property values. Duly noted. Thank you, Mr. Sam. Mr. Chairman, yes. um, Mr. Solomon did. Uh, yeah, I do have a, a, a letter. letter. I have a letter um, from Mr. Salmon, uh, a text, uh, an email, excuse me. Um, subject is stop FedEx to save North Quincy. Yet again, the scumbags FedEx that are trying to destroy my property values are asking and demanding a continuance of their hearing within only 24 hour, no 24 hour notice to the resident to residents of Quincy. This continued violation of the notification rules is unacceptable. The only notice of public hearing was posted in January. While the board insists on calling it a continuous, no meeting has actually taken place. Furthermore, FedEx did surveys of proposed road construction across from my building. Aside from the fact that they appear to be planning to fill in the swamp to widen the road and thus make our buildings more susceptible to flooding, they failed to recognize myself and the rest of the building as a party of interest. Yet another rule violation. As such, I ask the board to summarily reject FedEx's request for a continuance. They can start the process over if they wish and do the legal right slash legal way. Any approval of a continuance is unacceptable in a mockery of this process. Uh, Eric Salmon, 90 Quincy Shore Drive, Quincy, Mass, 02171. Mr. Uh, uh, does the department have edification for the board about where what's happening with this application? We received a uh, notice of continuance from the applicant's attorney this morning. Um, for the record, um, I've received, the department received a letter that's addressed to me. Please accept this letter as a request to continue the public hearing on the above re reference project scheduled for September to the October planning board meeting. The applicant at this time is trying to help resolve road condition for Commander Shea Boulevard. Thank you for your consideration and we look forward to discussing our project further with you and the planning board. Sincerely, Robert W. Hines. So I would just add that it is the um, legal authority uh, of Commander Shea Boulevard uh, easements, that legal review of those documents is my understanding of, of what's delaying uh, the, the continuance or the that this case from coming before the board. Uh, we have received full plans uh, on the proposed FedEx facility, but uh, you know, a big concern for uh, staff and I think the community is uh, the truck movements to and from that facility. Uh, so that review continues. Um, uh, I know the mayor's office is, uh, has, uh, or the, through the solicitor, through the mayor's office, the solicitor's office has been involved uh, with legal counsel for the applicant and all other interested parties. Uh, no resolution has come forward at this time, and I think that's the result of another continuance on this case. Very, very helpful for my getting comfortable with continuing. Thank you. Any other uh, questions or comments from board members? Yeah, do, um, does the planning department have uh, an opinion on Mr. Solomon's uh, request that we make them refile? Is there some legal requirement that uh, you prefer to have them continue or as to refile? The board can continue uh, to uh, approve the continuance of this case. It has been uh, properly notified in the beginning. Uh, however, I would say that this matter, it, the time is spinning on this. Uh, and uh, I think it, it came in originally in June. 
uh, and uh, we would look for a uh, possibly a different outcome uh, for the next meeting. Uh, you know, possibly withdraw. Um, if, if it's denied, uh, that would prevent this applicant from filing uh, for two years. I, I don't think that's in our best interest. <coughs> Uh, if this board uh, would like uh, to see this project move forward, uh, we should give them the opportunity to withdraw without prejudice, uh, which would allow them to refile. Uh, that refiling would essentially reset all of the public notification, um, two weeks notification, uh, you know, uh, twice, uh, one week out, once, two weeks out, and so on and so forth. Thank you. Any other questions? Okay. Um, what's the board's wishes? Oh, go ahead. Oh, it, I'm sorry. Just one last comment. It has been since January, not June, that it's going on. So this is nine months, not three. Um, I don't see why we should give them more benefit of doubt than the president's Wednesday night. Still press for a for a um, a note of the continuance and a rejection of it, and they can apply in two years if they choose to do so. It's uh, that would be my final statement. But thank you guys for taking the time to listen to me. Thank you. What's the motion to the board? I uh, make a motion to give them the additional month to continue to the October meeting. A motion made to. Um, Can we attach a comment to that that they be told that you know, if they, if they have to be ready to go sure. next month or withdraw? Because the you board know, feels. Sure. We can do that. Mr. Chairman, okay. I just um, would like to follow up on my email from earlier and recuse myself from any uh, court of votes. Yep. Duly noted. Okay, the motion's been made to. Grant it um, with the uh, with the, with the condition that they come back to an October meeting and make a presentation. Is there a second to that motion? Second. Discussion. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you. And, uh, so I just want to mention that October meeting uh, is scheduled 19. for October nineteenth. Okay, as I mentioned earlier, um, Member Camiso is, said he was going to be detained. He probably thought he was going to be here about 20 or 25 minutes late. Thought he'd be here by about 7.30. Um, understanding that, and then understanding that there'll only be four members to consider the next two applications, um, we have asked the two applicants um, they would like to wait until Member Camiso comes here or proceed. And both of them um, have stated that they would be willing to wait until Member Camiso comes. Now, understanding that there are members of the public um, who are here in this case, so um, I, and I apologize for the inconvenience, but Member Camiso did say that um, he had a previous commitment, but he would be here by 7.30-ish, okay? And it, it's not too far from here. So, um, understanding the willingness on the part of the applicant, and I hope the willingness on the part of the public, um, I'm just gonna, um, I'm just gonna uh, hold the meeting open until Member Camiso comes. So, uh, feel free. Uh, to uh, light them if you got them. Um, <laughs> Outside. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Can't do it yet. <laughs> yeah. You got it. Yeah. Yeah. I'm going to pass them around. Uh, we need like a side door to go out here. That's, ac that's actually where I was in between meetings yesterday. There's a little hump over in the back of the graveyard and you can sit down other than the people walking. <laughs> I'm 
I'm going to be one of the 12. So I'm still at four. Where I'm three. All on the Yeah. 
I'd like to go back into session just for one bit of housekeeping. Um, the 500 Kaminiche Boulevard, uh, which we just discussed and set up a uh, continuance date to, doesn't work because we have a member that had to recuse herself. Um, we have a member that is not going to be here on the 19th of October. So we, we need four members to sit. So, and we've advised the, Mr. Sullivan that, that uh, we're going to now schedule that continuance to the 9th of November, which will be the November meeting, and we will have a full, full uh, complement of members. So I just wanted the public to know that. Thank you. And uh, we'll go into a brief recess again. Thank you.
No, well, like I said, it's all about like he. If a neighbor doesn't care, then he cares. That's the way I look at it. You know, just lucky that I'm not the man. Yeah. You You'd be all either. But you wouldn't want to be the neighbor either, honestly. You know, in, in certain situations, you know. You know, in my neighborhood, it's funny because I have this multi-family because parking issues in my neighborhood. It's just part of being a citizen. I actually love being where I am because I can walk down the woods, etc. And I can utilize all the services and all the stuff, etc. I can walk down the team. So you get, you know, you get those kind of issues. Well, let's change it so like we can do it in residential A to let everyone benefit from the density. That's sort of the way I look at it. Well, I'm just saying, though, they do border each other. At some point, it goes from this to this. So I'm saying. That's exactly what my neighbor would say. Residents say on my street, once you know where it's residents. So, I mean, if, if Foresight in 2012, I would have, like, bought up all the business C property. That seems to be valuable. But you know what I was thinking, too? I think the Russians were hacking the emails. That's not how they were saying, how did they know about those properties? That was on uh, 1030 today. Oh, really? Yeah. And that's how they got it, so I can believe that. <laughs> I'd like to sing a song now. Can you go there? Yeah. Can you go there? I'm still going to stand outside with the sign at the airport. <laughs> you get paid per hour though, pretty much, don't you? Or do you take you by the job, don't you? No, I usually So I'm helping you. Yeah, I don't like being around, but I'm not. Well, it's still a hearings three, four hearings. I'd rather have one hearing. But you're paid well though. Yeah. So. <laughs> I'm as good as real estate brokers. Real estate brokers get paid. Uh, I would say probably. Big camera guys get paid. True. I agree. This case, you'll make probably more off these guys than all my commissions in the entire year. <laughs> The developers are the people that um, actually do the best. I mean, if, you know, go back and think and start to fight. Yeah. 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 Well, well, the builder too is making some money because they're kind of like a temporary person. They're kind of get paid and then they're out of the project, whether whether it's failing or not. So I mean, but there's a misnomer. There's, there's a there's a misnomer and a misbelief that everybody just walks away with a huge profit. Yeah, the more risk you take, the more you're worth it. But not all the time. Right. And there's a lot of people that are on these kinds of things. Literally, I bought it on the Friday and on Monday. It was right. They did all that money because they took a permit. They could be a part of it. They built a building and it didn't sell. Yeah, right. well, it could have been a problem. Yeah. I don't think it was a rat. I haven't seen any rats around. Really? There's a lot of coyotes in our area. I know down in Elm Street, Green Tree, 
So Patrick, you need to write a story saying how they need to have like six or seven members on the planning board so we don't have incidents like this for the four people that are here. Well, the, the reason is they need... Continuing the, the uh, agenda, the next item is continued public hearing for the uh, 264 West Street site plan slash special permit planning board case 2016-05 continues from the August 24, 2016 meeting. The applicant uh, representative here. Thank you, Mr. Chairman, members of the board. Uh, for the record, I'm uh, Edward Fleming on behalf of Stephen Bayless, uh, West Street uh, Property LLC. Uh, as the board is aware, we were here uh, last time uh, before the, the board, actually previous to the continuation of this matter, where we made a presentation, the full presentation of the proposal. Uh, since that time, uh, during that time, in that meeting, uh, uh, a neighbor, an abutting neighbor raised uh, legitimate concerns about an encroachment that existed as in, in the, the, the right of way that was utilized for access to this site encroached on his driveway, or his driveway, I should say, encroached on the right of way. Um, regardless of whose uh, responsibility it was to, to move or relocate their driveway, um, Mr. Bayless um, requested a continuance that night and met with he and his counsel, Brian Conley. Uh, Stephen Conley is the neighbor. Brian Conley was the attorney that represented him. Um, and we had lengthy discussions and meetings at the site uh, with the parties. Uh, in the effort to resolve the concerns about the encroachment. And what, what resulted from that, those meetings, is that uh, the driveway was shifted away from Mr. Conley's property. Um, we had at the time the ability, because the driveway or the right of way was 20 feet in total width, so we had the ability to shift the driveway over and modify the driveway in such a fashion that we could eliminate or simply eliminate the encroachment uh, that Mr. Conley's driveway had on this easement. And by doing so, we also eliminated the concern that um, Member Glenn had raised about the removal of a telephone pole and relocation of a telephone pole on the front entrance way. Uh, by shifting the driveway over and modifying the driveway accordingly, there was no need to remove that telephone pole. So that eliminated the costs to Mr. Bayless, but also any interruption in any service uh, for other neighbors in the community. Um, it did not impact in any other way uh, the, the, um, the proposal as it was made to you that night. Uh, in fact, um, the drainage uh, has been reviewed, again by peer review, who's here tonight, uh, who, could, who could speak to the fact that it, it, um, the driveway of, um, uh, changes will not, did not impact the drainage in any manner. And therefore, um, uh, we're comfortable that, we, that it didn't impact the proposal in any way. In fact, uh, since that time, a letter was submitted to this body, uh, to the department, by the fire department, who again reviewed the driveway to ensure that there was safe and appropriate egress to the site, and they again indicated that they were comfortable with the egress. So um, I, I do have a letter um, that was submitted to me or provided to me by Brian Conley, signed by Stephen Conley, indicating that he was withdrawing his objection, uh, indicating um, that, uh, that Mr. Bayless worked in good faith, attempt to address his concerns about the pro uh, proposed project at 264 West Street. And I'd like to submit that, Mr. Chair, if I may, for the department's record. So, um, 
we're, we're cert we can certainly make any, any additional presentations that the board feels necessary. I know I, I've been working very closely with Mr. Stevens and the planning department to ensure that all the issues in, in, um, were appropriately addressed, and I know that Mr. Stevens is prepared uh, tonight to make a recommendation. But if Mr. Chairman and other members, if you'd like any additional presentations, so. Any questions to be asked? Thank you. Okay, it is a continued public hearing. Uh, is there anyone who wishes to um, speak? Sir, step up, introduce yourself. Fine. Mike Cannon from 17 Basic Road. I've been in Quincy since uh, 81, and uh, you never saw these kind of projects back then. Uh, it, I just don't see how you go into single family neighborhoods, you take down a one house, and you put up eight units with 12 cars. I, I don't see how that's uh, good for the future of Quincy. That's all I to say. Thank you, sir. <coughs> Anyone else wishes to speak? Anyone else wishes to speak? Anyone else wishes to speak? Anybody who does not want to speak but wants to be recorded, there are uh, sheets on the uh, window over here. Uh, not hearing it, do I have a motion to close the public hearing? So, Stevens. Good evening, Mr. Chairman. This case uh, is before you for under site plan review only uh, under section 9.5.1. Uh, I would like to point out to the board that uh, there is a pending application uh, sitting before the zoning board uh, detailing floor area ratio, lot area per dwelling unit, uh, and frontage requirements, uh, as well as the number of units. Uh, that zoning board uh, meeting has been continued uh, to September 27th. With that out of the way, uh, this project has been reviewed uh, by uh, the independent peer review firm Wooded and Curran. Uh, their last report uh, for this case was issued on July 11th uh, of this year. Uh, I would say uh, to attorney Fleming's comments uh, about adjustments to the driveway. Uh, those were forwarded to Woodard and Curran for review and no further comments uh, came of that review. He was satisfied. Uh, this project was also reviewed by uh, the city's uh, engineering department, health department, uh, and uh, traffic engineer. Uh, and with that, uh, we believe because this is only site plan review, uh, that I could recommend to this board to move forward uh, with the recommendation for approval. Uh, Go ahead, Mr. Okay. Uh, we, we have worked on uh, some conditions uh, for that approval, and I'd be more than happy to share them now. Please. Uh, condition one, uh, the planning board site plan approval is contingent upon the zoning board of appeal approval of the applicant's variance application. Number two, the applicant shall adhere to the requirements of the city's tree ordinance. Number three, the applicant shall provide the planning department with a copy of all related easement documents showing that the applicant has the legal rights to access uh, the site uh, as proposed. Uh, number four, prior to any building permits being issued, the applicant will perform a water flow test with the city's water department. Number five, the applicant shall be required to obtain any necessary sewer connection permit and street opening permits from the Department of Public Works. Number six, the applicant shall be responsible for, for replacing any city signage that is removed during construction. Uh, prior to the start of construction, the applicant shall provide a list of signage to be replaced with pictures and location on a map to the city traffic engineer. Number seven, uh, it is crucial that any activities proposed for this development not cause rodent problems for abutters. Prior to obtaining a demolition or building permit, the applicant must submit a rodent control plan uh, to the Department of Health for review and approval at least 10 days prior to any site activities. <coughs> rodent control practices must continue uh, through the duration of the construction phase of this project. Uh, number eight, uh, the applicant shall develop a dust control plan to be implemented during any site activities to ensure compliance uh, with state air quality regulations and shall commit to conformance with both local and state regulations regarding noise since this project is within a residential neighborhood and construction could generate uh, noise generating activities. Uh, 
Number nine, the applicant shall submit a pre-demolition survey to the health department for any potential asbestos-containing <coughs> materials uh, to be conducted by a licensed DLI certified inspector. If asbestos-containing materials is present, it must be removed by that licensed kind of contractor and a post-abatement inspection must be performed by a DLI certified project monitor. Uh, number 10, the applicant shall submit a construction management plan to the traffic engineer for review and approval at the same time that a building permit application is submitted for review by the uh, inspectional services department. Review of the construction management plan will take a minimum of two weeks. The construction management plan shall include but is not limited to the following items. Uh, traffic management plan for any sidewalk replacement, curb ramps, and utility construction. Truck route for deliveries to and from the highway. Truck access to the site. Construction signage. Construction work hours and days. Hours, days for deliveries. Erosion control plan. A schedule of work being done on site and off site and the overall length of construction. Location of construction fencing and gate on the plan with crushed stone apron. Traffic manage pl management plan for utility work. Uh, the detour route for vehicles if needed. Uh, the route for pedestrians, including any ADA requirements, signage, and safety requirements. Uh, construction site plan for barrier and signage. Uh, the following statement should be included in the plan. Uh, quote, provide the city's traffic engineering three business days notice that construction will begin, end quote. Uh, provide description of any work being done in the street and provide a traffic management plan uh, to perform this work for approval by the city's traffic engineer. Uh, condition number 11, uh, provide a description of any work being done in the street and provide a traffic management plan to perform this work uh, by the city's traffic engineer. Uh, condition number 12, the post-construction operation and maintenance plan for the dry wells and all related drainage structures and site maintenance which includes the ownership and responsible parties shall be recorded at the Norfolk County Registry of Deeds as part of the Planning Board decision. Number 13, the applicant shall submit to the Planning Board a copy of the recorded condominium association agreement prior to the issuance of an occupancy permit. Uh, 14, upon completion of this project, the applicant shall submit to the Planning Board as built plans showing all utilities, building footprints, reference bounds, and benchmarks defining the total site facilities and rights of way. Plans uh, shall be submitted in a digital format acceptable to the planning department. And number 15, the hours of construction activities and deliveries of materials is as follows. 7 a.m. to 5 p.m. Monday through Friday. 8 a.m. to 4 p.m. on Saturday. And all construction and deliveries shall be prohibited on Sunday unless a different schedule is approved by the chief of police. That's the end of the recommended conditions. Thank you, Mr. Stevens. Any questions from the board? Do I have a motion? I have a motion to uh, approve the site plan review in accordance with those conditions just read by Mr. Stevens. Is there a second to that motion? Second. Discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Next item is the continued public hearing for 661 665 and 671 Washington Street. Site plan, um, special permit, planning board case 2016 09, which was continued from the August 24, 2016. Mr. Fleming. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Again, members of the board, um, Edward Fleming on behalf of Jumbo Self Storage. Um, again, this is a continued matter. Uh, last time we were before this board, we made a full presentation of the proposal. Um, uh, and uh, specifically um, uh, discussed and, and shared with the board uh, significant uh, measures that were taken to improve the architectural elements of the building. Architecture was a, was a uh, key issue of concern uh, of, the, of the board and also of the department, uh, specifically as a gateway <coughs> project in the city. Uh, we made that full presentation, um, and since that time, 
Uh, we've had further discussions with the uh, the department about conditions that were important to the to the department and to this board, uh, ensuring that all of the issues related to this, um, the uh, peer review had been appropriately addressed. So we're confident and comfortable that we've done so. I've had discussions with Mr. Stevens, who I know is prepared to make a recommendation tonight. Uh, that's we don't have any additional information to provide to the board at this time. However, we're certainly here to answer any questions. Any questions of uh, Mr. Flynn? Yeah. Thank you. Go ahead. Um, a bit of a, a business question. What is the occupancy rate that they intend to run at um, once they get up and running? 80% of units rented, 60% of The standard occupancy uh, rate for the building is like, like 3%. Yes. At 90, uh, the top companies are running about 95. So pro projected at 90% uh, and indicating that the many of the top companies are up, up to 95%. Okay, so typical for similar businesses operating around here, they're running at 90 plus. In the 90. Very helpful, thank you. Except for the new one. The, the new South Service that was built. It takes oh. about four years to fill up. It takes four years? Yeah, about, about four years. I think what was reported last time, if, if I remember correctly, was about 75% occupancy as of uh, this date. So it's, uh, it's only been, I think, a couple of years that that building has been open. Um, so we anticipate 95%. And that extra space actually maintains, I believe, many of the facilities, many of the storage facilities in the city of Quincy. So they certainly see a demand uh, for it as they continue to, to purchase these uh, storage facilities. So, <coughs> thank you. Any other comments on the board? Uh, I'd like to read a uh, email that was uh, received by the department. It's, it's dear chairman and members of the board. Unfortunately, I'm unable to uh, attend tonight's meeting due to a conflict with my day job. I wanted to provide some thoughts regarding the application for a storage facility located at 671 Washington Street. Some residents have shared with me that the storage facility is not the most optimal use for the property. On some level, I agree. However, I'm always aware that in a zoned industrial area, you're subject to a lot more undesirable business models coming into your neighborhood other than a self-storage facility. Self-storage businesses typically attract a low volume of traffic, which is something to seriously consider given the already high volume of traffic along the corridor. In addition, I believe that the investment into the area will be needed, will, will be a needed update to the dilapidated boat yard that is currently there. The agreed upon landscape plan should enhance the aesthetic view along Washington Street. I also appreciate the applicant for making several noti noticeable uh, architectural enhancements to the plan. Please keep in mind that I think it would be helpful to have a conversation regarding signage. This may be something you look to in condition, in, in to, to look to condition within the permit. Uh, thank you, Brad Kroll, Council. Um, sure. Come on up. <coughs> I don't agree with your uh, numbers here about how many, you know, how much occupied. That other building, I went over there, it's not even a quarter full. It's got 900 units in it. It's been there two years and not even a quarter full. It's like, why do you need another one? That one's not even full yet. And the other thing, the traffic. I drive a truck. I go by there twice a day. And I live there. And the traffic. They say there's not going to be a problem with traffic. But excuse me, but there is. You know, any car. You know, any time of the day that wants to go into that spot, it's going to get rear-ended at 55 miles an hour because that's how fast the cars go from one light to the light right before them to the road. I know anybody that drives in Quincy can tell you how fast the cars go on that street. Someone was hit a couple weeks ago on Washington Street, right in front of Wild Willie's on the street. So there is a traffic problem there. And also, we're not hearing anything about them. They have nothing else to say. I want to hear what they have to say about drainage. You open up that ground, you don't even know what's under it. They don't even want to test it. I don't hear anything about the EPA, anyone else coming to test that ground. You open up that parking lot that's had a flat top on it, it's draining into the river all these years. Where's the water going to go? back towards us. What are they going to do to protect my property when they dig up that, that ground 
they going to put something down to keep water from going in my living room because it's a townhouse and the living room's in the basement. What are they going to do for that? I don't hear nothing about the drainage. They had a two-page letter, Mr. Fleming, from the engineer in front of me, about the problems that they have to correct about their drainage system. And what the, the engineer didn't like it. And you, got, you got a letter from All the office. All that is awesome. Well, that is Well, we haven't heard it in the meeting. You don't talk about any of that. What are you going to do? What are you going to do about a lot of things when you start building there? You know, in the boat yard, the boat yard yeah, is going to still be there. Yeah, you know, they say it's got, they're getting rid of it now. They only took an acre and a half or six and a half acres. So to say the boat yard's gone, it's still going to be there. It's going to be right in front of the building. Right when you come over the bridge, you see the boats and you see the building. They're the last thing you see. Then you see our houses. So I, you know, I think the numbers here and what they have to say about the occupancy, four years, they ain't going to fill up 1,075 units. I'm sorry. We already have enough self-storage in Quincy. That's, a, yeah, that's all I have to say. Thank you. Okay. I think you may be interested to hear our peer review of some of his comments. Right. Mr. White, I'm sorry to meet her. Probably should have had you speak first. Yeah. Thank you. Good evening. My name is Jim White. I'm with the engineering firm of HW Moore Associates. We performed uh, three peer reviews on this project. The initial peer review was on June 16th. Uh, we issued a uh, peer review, we commented on uh, a number of issues including utilities, storm drainage, uh, the site layout, handicap compliance, sewer water pipes. Uh, new plans were issued, we found the second peer review. Uh, at that point almost all comments were, were adequately addressed. Uh, they did, we did issue our second peer review on August 12th and they issued revised drawings. Um, which addressed all of our comments. The proposed project uh, will comply with all the DP stormwater management requirements. It will mitigate the flow of uh, stormwater off the site. It will also remove 80% uh, of the total, more than 80% of the total suspended solids. Uh, the stormwater from the site flows through an existing piping system underneath the uh, bulk yard out to the easterly direction. Uh, we've asked them to, to survey, long video survey of that pipe to ensure that it's in good condition um, prior to um, uh, during the construction of the project. Uh, we're confident the storm drainage system will work adequately uh, on this project. Uh, we, we made two recommendations uh, for the project. Uh, one was to videotape the stormwater pipe, uh, the stormwater piping system is part of the um, of the project, and the second one was to uh, consider increasing the radius of the curb off Washington Street to help traffic move into the site a little easier. Um, and that's what will be one of the conditions that we approve. So they're going to do that with the city. Um, other than that, the plans were very well done, I thought, and uh, that's all I can Thank you. Any questions from the board? Is there, um, so does the peer review address any concerns, uh, environmental concerns? We did not review the uh, environmental concerns. Uh, they did submit uh, information on that. Uh, uh, you know, part of the site was an old casting station. Uh, we did not, but part of our part, <coughs> we do not have expertise in that field, so we do not review it. Concerned about you know what could be there at that site um, relative to lead paint, certainly from the boatyard, or like you said, it was a previously a, a petroleum facility. So, if, if I may address sure. that, um, there was a 21E done on the site, oh, okay. and that that 21E report has been provided to the department for their review, and there's a condition within the decision that there'll be further monitoring of the soils during the construction process, and any reporting to DEP uh, as deemed appropriate. Okay. Thank you. Any other questions? <coughs> oh, I'm sorry. Sir. Yeah. On this uh, testing of the ground, they're talking about a gas station that closed down 20 years ago. They're not talking about the boat yard where the shipyard was on for 100 years. 
That's the land that needs to be tested. Not this testing from a gas station that's been closed down for 20 years. That's been going on for 20 years. So you have further testing, they go monitor it. They haven't tested the ground where the bull guy is. Yes, we did. We did? We did. Right. That's my non environmental opinion. <laughs> Anyone else wants to speak? Let me go back to the board. Any other questions from the board? Um, I, I just have one, and, I, and it, it deals with the uh, caliper of the trees. Um, I think you've got to increase the caliper of those trees there. They'll go over in a, in a, in a minor windstorm. Okay? I think they need to be bigger. I think they need to be, um, I don't know. What, what are you expecting now for the caliper of those? Too, too much caliper? We're happy to increase the caliper of the trees. I'm sorry, I can't hear you. Perfectly happy to increase the, the caliper of trees. Well, I spoke. I spoke with the department about this as well, and certainly there's, a, there's an interest in, in, uh, in uh, responding to the concerns of the department to ensure that the caliper is appropriate. Uh, the goal was to have a really dr dramatically improved landscaping, so we'll increase the caliber of the trees to what the department thinks is reasonable. I think we talked about four inch caliber trees. Four, four and a half. That, that's five, five. I'd, I'd like to see it go to five, five and a half, but that's just me. Uh, anybody else wishes to speak? Please, come on up. Identify yourself. My name is Ivy Goss, 6 Street South State Uniform. It's been very interesting to you. But um, when um, on the DPW, um, I, when I first got there, I was getting these amazing amounts of water bills. So I'm like, I went down there. It took me forever sitting in front of the woman that's underneath the head of the DPW. And I found, first I found the place, and then I go, I don't have a washing machine. To so this went on, and I was getting like percentages on the on the on the um, taxes, and, what, and I and so. <clears throat> what happened was where they, they went in they and on the old up and it, you got 1896 and the thing came up like that and then the, then they said so they just over went on but it took a long time and then they they put down um, one that read leads up to a satellite but it took like first they wouldn't let them into like the, you know dark days like you know thing you looked up on the you know, uh, <laughs> and the was the, the so took it down to the tree truck. That when I read um, <clears throat> about the water, they, they're going to like go in between everybody's property to get to the main water, if I'm not mistaken, on South Street, connect to the main pipes. Because I had an awful time with the DPW. I was, you know, you people seem like it's like just a snap. I was like, not a bad time. We sat there and talked about life and everything. I said, no, really, <laughs> you're really good. And then I got an abatement, abatement, abatement. But it's going to run along. Is it correct in my thinking that they're going to dig along all sides? Because there is no there is no connecting water to the main water pipes, which I don't know what years they go back to. And then on the one on um, Washington Street and South Street, just kind of wondering about that. They are going to go between. Did I read that correctly? When I saw the dip dot, dip dot, dip dot, they go between the properties and they dig and they connect onto the onto the main water pipes. Is that how they're doing? I assume they're coming over in Eastern. They're going to be, there is no, there is no water storage there, so they have to come right out into the, they have to dig up every, in between everybody's property and wet pipes. That's a lot of digging. A lot of digging. But what I read, what, what I could read up, I sat and yelled without the dip dot, dip dot, I went, wow, they're going to in between every property and dig out and connect off to the main thing. And I, I sat there forever trying to connect that, you know, DPW has increased their potential since I saw the abatement thing. That's all I need to say. Thank you very much. Thank, Thank you. you. Anyone else wishes to speak? Or wishes to be recorded? Who hasn't spoken? Okay, since there isn't anyone else who wishes to speak, I'd entertain a motion to close the public hearing. So moved. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Thank you. Mr. Stevens. Uh, good evening, Mr. Chairman and uh, board members. 
I have here a, a recommendation. Uh, you did hear from the uh, peer reviewer uh, that this project was reviewed uh, and there was a, a significant back and forth with this project uh, and, and the applicant ha has satisfied uh, the department and the review uh, to this point. Uh, this case is, is a three for, uh, it's three special permits. It's um, under section 3.1.3, major non-residential use, under 5.1.17, uh, parking waiver, and uh, 5.3.13. Uh, I am prepared to make a, an affirmative recommendation on all three. Uh, I'd be happy to entertain um, any questions uh, on the department's recommendation from the board members uh, pertaining to each one of those realms. Okay, I, I have a series of conditions. Um, I think uh, to the, the public comments, uh, we tried to ensure that uh, you know that the public will be protected by the development of this building. Um, so, in my uh, recommendation for approval, uh, the first condition, number one. Uh, prior to the start of construction and after the completion of the project, uh, the applicant shall have the existing sewer main and downstream stormwater drain pipes on Reed Avenue and associated manholes inspected using a video camera and tested for integrity. Results of these inspections shall be submitted to the Department of Public Works for their review and the applicant shall be responsible for any upgrades needed to the existing infrastructure as a result of any recommendations made by the DPW. Uh, number two, the app applicant will pursue a larger curb cup radius with the city's Department of Public Works prior to the start of construction in order to create an access that can better accommodate uh, large trucks. Uh, condition number three, uh, there shall be no outside storage or rental of vehicles, large equipment, storage pods or other similar containers allowed at this site. The applicant has indicated that only sales of items associated with moving and storage will be conducted within the building. Uh, number four, the applicant shall submit a copy of the National Pollutant Discharge Elimination Permit, uh, commonly referred to as NIPTES, as required by the EPA to the Planning Department for its files. Uh, I'm going to pause right there. Uh, my, my next uh, condition uh, deals with existing trees. Um, at uh, part of the conversation, a minimum of four inch caliper. Um, I could add it to this condition um, if the board so chooses. So, uh, number five, there have been three uh, trees identified along the western property line of the site that are over eight inch caliper trees. These trees are to remain in place. Any variation from this plan shall require the approval of the city tree ward. Uh, number six, it was agreed that the location of this project is a gateway to the city of Quincy. The planning board is sensitive to the impact of the building on the landscape of the area. The planning board has agreed to a particular architectural design of the building. No substantial deviations from the approved architectural design shall be allowed without the approval of the planning board. Uh, during the building permit application review or the construction phase, any minor modifi modifications uh, that arise may be approved by both the director of inspectional services and the planning director. Number seven, uh, the applicant has submitted a phase one environmental site assessment and phase two site investigative reports. Based on the concentrations of contaminants of concerns or COCs identified in these reports, the applicant shall be responsible for preparing a soil management plan to outline on-site soil management procedures during construction and the requirements for testing and off-site reuse if fill material is to be removed from the site. In addition, they will complete an on-site screening during soil excavation in order to confirm uh, disturbed soils does not appear significantly more impacted than indicated in the Phase 2 SI results. A copy of the uh, soil management plan shall be submitted to the Planning Department and to the Department of Health prior to any land disturbance activities. Provided that the special permit on signage is issued under 5.3.13, for the proposed wall signs, uh, the applicant uh, shall submit to the Director of Inspectional Services for approval 
final sign detail plan or plans and specifications. The applicant shall be required to obtain any necessary sewer connection permit, stormwater management permit, and street opening permits from the Department of Public Works. Number 10, the City of Quincy may, at its discretion, use consultants to supplement city staff for, but not limited to, uh, the purpose of construction observation. The cost of these services shall be paid for by the applicant from the peer review escrow account through the planning department. Uh, the escrow account shall be funded to 50% of the original peer review fee of $15,000 30 days prior to any land disturbance activities. Number 11, it is crucial that any activities proposed for this development not cause rodent problems for abutters. Prior to obtaining a demolition or building permits, the applicant must submit a rodent control plan to the Department of Health for review and approval at least 10 days prior to any site activities. Rodent control practices must continue for the duration of the construction phase of this project. Number 12, the applicant shall develop a dust control plan to be implemented during any site activities to ensure compliance with state air quality regulations. Number 13, uh, the applicant shall commit to conformance with both local and state regulations regarding noise since this project is within a residential neighborhood and construction could create noise generating activities. The applicant shall submit a pre-demolition survey to the health department for any potential asbestos-containing materials to be conducted by a licensed DLI certified inspector. If asbestos-containing materials is present, it must be removed by a licensed contractor and a post-abatement inspection must be per performed uh, by a DLI certified project monitor. Number 15, the applicant shall submit a formal letter and revised plan with the final plan set that details the internal vehicular traffic signs in their location. Uh, number 16, the applicant shall submit a construction management plan to the traffic engineer for review and approval at the same time that the building permit application is submitted for review uh, by the inspectional services department. Review of the construction management plan will take a minimum of two weeks. Uh, number 17, the construction management plan shall include, uh, but is not limit, limited to, the following items. Uh, provide a description of any work being done in the street and provide traffic management plan to perform this work for approval by the city's traffic engineer. Traffic management plans for any sidewalk replacement curb, ramps, and utility construction. Truck routes for deliveries to and from the highway with appropriate hours and days of delivery. Construction signage, construction work hours and days. Erosion control plan including construction entrance and fencing. Schedule of work being done on site and off site with regards to traffic related items. Location of construction fencing and gate on the plan with crushed stone apron. Length of construction. Uh, the detour route for vehicles if needed. The route for pedestrians included any ADA requirements, signage and safety requirements. Construction site plan for barrier and signage. In the following statement should be included in the plan, quote, provide the city's traffic engineer three business days notice that construction will begin, end quote. Uh, number 18, the post-construction operations and maintenance manual plan for the dry wells and all related drainage structures and site maintenance, which includes the ownership and responsible parties, shall be recorded at the North Fork County Registry of Deeds as part of the planning board decision. Number 19, upon completion of this project, the applicant shall submit to the City Engineering Office and Planning Department as built plans showing all utilities, building footprints, reference bounds, and benchmarks defining the total site, facilities, and rights of way. Plans shall sub be submitted in a digital, digital format acceptable to the City Engineering uh, Office and Planning Department. Uh, number 20, the hours for construction activities will be as follows. 7 a.m. to 5 p.m. Monday through Friday. 8 a.m. to 4 p.m. on Saturday, and all construction and delivery shall be prohibited on Sunday unless a different schedule is approved by the Chief of Police. That's the end of my uh, conditions. Thank you, Mr. Stevens. Board members, any questions? Um, I uh, would ask, and I go back to that, probably more appropriate in condition number five, where you're talking about the, the, uh, the trees that are already there, I would like the insertion of uh, all new trees shall be a minimum of four to four and a half inch caliper trees and subject to the, to the department's uh, approval. And under nine, 
uh, which presently reads, the applicant shall be required to obtain all necessary sewer connection permit, stormwater management permit, and street opening permit from the Department of Public Works should in, prior to the approval uh, of a building permit, which may be SOP, but. All right, those changes will be made. Any other, any other comments? A motion to approve? subject to the conditions written in the record and as um, enhanced by the chair. So a second to the motion. Second. Discussion. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Unanimous. Thank you very much for your time. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Uh, since there is no other new business or old business, uh, our next meeting is um, the 19th of October. I think there is circulating if everybody has had an opportunity to sign. Great. Uh, and then motion to adjourn. Thank you all. Where are you going? Chicago. Okay. Yeah. <laughs>